It's me, Mikey Pipes. You see this? This is a Burnham Alpine. If you work on them, you want to pay very close attention to this video. Because not only are we, are we going to fix the red screen of death because of a failed blower motor, but I'm going to show you two things you need to look at when you're servicing a Burnham Alpine. So make sure you stick around. And I want to give a special shout out to the people at Brunt Footwear. They are nice. Looking. Real quick, they are nice. You see them? It's pretty cool. Five seconds of fame. Brunt Footwear. Check them out in the description box down below. Let's get on with today's video. Good morning. It's me, Mikey Pipes. Friday, 28th, October, 2022. I got to clean this out over the next few days. I make room for that Turbo S Cabriolet that I picked up yesterday. You know, the one in this video right there. <laughs> oh man, it was epic. But enough of that. Friday, October 22nd, 2022. A little after 10.15 in the morning. Heading over to the shop and then we're going to record a video for a customer in Floral Park who has a Burnham Alpine uh, ALP 105 gas fired, you know, condensing boiler. It's not mounted on a wall. It's on the floor. And I was actually there uh, just about a year ago on New Year's Day. New Year's Day he had a red screen, you know, the screen of death. And, uh, of course, the parts were on the truck, right? Replaced that Sage controller, got it done. So this time he's got another problem, another red screen, and it looks like a blower failure. So let's go see what's going on, guys. All right? Pull up your pants, tie your boots. Let's get going! I want to show you how to diagnose an Alpine... And they're all the same, whether it's the 80, the 105, two, whatever it is. Yeah, grab your knee pads, Peter. Hi, Peter. How are you? Good. Oh, did you have a good day today so far? Yeah. Excellent. Easy. It's Friday. Don't you love Fridays? I love me Fridays. Okay, so this customer has a red screen of death. Okay, it's going through the initial startup process, right? We just applied power. We're gonna take a visual observation first of what we got going on. We have, what, what do you see immediately wrong with the installation? Immediately wrong? Yes. The leaky air vent. With the installation. And ladies and gentlemen, in the comments section down below, I also want you to give you the opportunity. This isn't the closest base Bingo! Excellent job, Daniel. Look how much you've progressed since you've worked here in what? 16 months? 14 months? No. Around there. Look at that. You now know. I remember the first boiler you went to. Well, one of the first one. It was a Navian. Oh, yeah. I you were paranoid. You were... You were shitting bricks. I was spraying water out of the relief valve. <laughs> I mean, I had like, thankfully this guy didn't come down. I had like an inch of water on his floor and his boiler. <laughs> I threw you to the wolves and you uh, worked on a Death Box Incorporated machine as one of the first ones. And yeah. yeah, so correct. One of the first things that as, you know, as a technician, you need to do a visual inspection of what's going on. And you haven't been here before. I have. You've been here last week, right? And full disclosure, folks, I already diagnosed the problem. We have the part, um, and it is what it is. We have an expansion tank uh, in a horizontal uh, orientation. That is not recommended in the manual. Upright, vertically, is recommended. Am I here to reinvent the wheel? Absolutely not. Is Daniel here to reinvent the wheel? Absolutely not. But you best believe when it comes time to replace that expansion tank, it can be done easily. Well, as soon as it heats up, it's going to leak. It's full. Is it? The relief house, or the pressure gauge is reading. Yeah, look at that. Reading 25. You best believe that when this tank is replaced, and it may be today, we're going to close that valve, right? <laughs> that people comment, you can't have a valve there because I'm having somebody closes it. Your relief valve is going to drip. No shit, Sherlock. It's for the service technician to close to replace the expansion tank. It would be nice if it had a little drain there, but we can always take out the Schrader core out of the um, tank, but we'll put an, uh, an, el uh, not an elbow, a nipple and an elbow and an uh, install it in the 
vertical orientation. Peter, do you see anything else wrong with this installation? Or do you? Um, more than what I have. Besides this, this leaking horribly? With the installation. That is more of a service issue, and it's, it's leaking because it's cold. And it's probably tired, too. Ladies and gentlemen, do you see anything else wrong with the installation? Let me get your thoughts and feedback down in the comment section down below. I'm waiting. The trip leg isn't three inches on the gas pipe. I don't know if that counts. No. Um, dum, 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 dum. I actually expect Peter to get this too. Really? Yes. <clears throat> we'll pause. Wait. Oh, well, we're gonna pause. I'm gonna let them figure it out. Have you question. have one thing? Yeah. What is it? A brass fitting on the condensate. That's gonna rust out. <laughs> don't don't they know hacks bring us stacks? When I say us, I mean Daniel, me. The low water cutoffs not wired in. Oh, fuck! Finally. Oh, I figured that. That's whatever. Finally, I that could be a service thing. All right, but I am gonna I am going to put it in the installation category because either it's a shitty low water cutoff and they never bothered never bothered to wire it in, so it lacks a low water cutoff. Correct. I don't see anything else wrong with the installation that's here in this room, but that's what I say. All right, let me get your thoughts and feedback. If we're missing anything. Because we need to learn from one another. That's the only way we're going to make the trades great again. You see how we're uniform. We look professional. Nice and clean. Right? That is how we make the trades great again. We don't show up like bums. We don't show up in a beat-up, jalopy, hoopty vehicle outside with no lettering on it or with passenger plates. Right? Instead of commercial plates. We're presentable, professional. We respect the customer's time and property. And we get the job done. That's making the trades great again. Are you with me? Thumbs up. Okay. Now, we have a lockout. See? We're going to go to help. We're going to go to active faults. Hard lockout. And we're going to do a number 19. Purge rate proving failed. All right? You can pause that. We're going to turn power. We just power cycled it again. So one of the first things that this machine does when it turns on is you hear certain things. We don't hear that. What do we hear? We hear that blower okay, yeah. or the inducer motor, which is that component right there. So there are two harnesses that plug into that assembly. And for um, purposes of the video, here is the new assembly. Here is power. This is line voltage, L1, neutral, and, and ground. And there is a communication uh, harness plug. We don't hear anything going on here, right? So I want you to get your voltmeter. We're going to unplug the line voltage, which is back here. We're not getting zapped, all right? And we're going to check for power here. We have black and white, and we have black and green. But let's check there and see if we have power. Daniel has the Klein tools. I don't know why he doesn't have a fluke, but... I have a test up too, but I really like the Klein. You like the Klein? Okay. Yeah. So we L1... So there, is it all in? Yep. Yes, and we have 122 volts. However, when it was plugged in, we have no bueno, no bueno. So now for testing purposes, we've already verified that the motor is getting power, but it's not turning on. What we're gonna do now is, just for testing purposes, turn off the power. We're going to take this valve, this valve, this assembly, we're gonna plug those ports in, and we're gonna see what that does. Okay. If you didn't have voltage coming from that set of wires, we have to we have to diagnose a electrical issue. Could be a stage control issue. Could be electrical issue. Something of that nature. Loose wire, bad harness, things like that. Okay. There we go. So let's apply power. You ready? Yep. There you go. See that? You heard that, right? We did not hear it in the other one. Now we know we have a bad motor. Okay, so now that I've shown how to diagnose a blower assembly, and by the way, in case you're wondering what the part number is, um, there it is. Good luck getting it. 
Uh, they're back ordered uh, six to eight weeks from U.S. Boiler. By the way, today is Friday, October 28th, 2022. I have to double check on the watch, right? Um, but here's a couple other things I want you to look out for, especially if you're an HVAC technician, plumber, what have you, and you work on the Burnham Alpine. Develop relationships, build value, let your experience, right? The more you know, the more you'll earn, right? And the more trust you'll develop with your clients. Let me show you two other things you need to look out for. Number one, that right there with the electric tape on it, <laughs> that is the exhaust flu sensor and cap. All right, if we take this out, you're gonna see that is no bueno. Okay, uh, it's corroded. We have bad, um, bad electrical contacts there. That is not good, ladies and gentlemen. This is not good. So we need a new cap and a new sensor, and we're probably going to resplice new spade connectors on here. Right? Just actually, we're not probably. We're going to. So that's one thing to look out for. And this is the stack sensor or the flu sensor. Right? It has the cap and um, the sensor. Years ago, and I'm talking about almost. Eight years ago, a U.S. boiler, Burnham, issued out a recall for that exact issue, and they actually paid the licensed uh, plumber, the installing contractor, or someone during preventative maintenance to replace that cap. That, that recall or that issue has since expired, so now it's available as a replacement part uh, through U.S. boiler Burnham. Now, that was the first of two issues that you need to address on a service call servicing a boiler. Here's the second. Okay, good. The second is, you take a look at these three sensors, right? The one right there. The one right here. Peter, I mean, Daniel, is it the first one or the second one? The second one. The second one. That one right there. I think it's the first one. No, it's the first it's one. The first it's one. different on the other one. This one right here. If you have the one that has that, you need to replace this before you have a another, like an emergency service call on Christmas or New Year's. The replacement ones have a little pigtail wire coming out of it, uh, and that is a high temperature uh, boiler sensor for water temperature. Okay? So you'll want to replace that as well. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's just about... A little under two hours on site. Uh, Daniel and Peter are finishing up the reassembly of the gas piping, and then we're going to do the uh, final startup and commissioning of the uh, the boiler um, after you know we basically had this whole thing disassembled. So make sure you stick around for that. But before we go into that, I want to show you how we worded this on the service invoice for the homeowner. Um, I like to write books. It's best to have as much detail there as possible. That way everyone is on the same page and it's all in writing. So let me show you what I did on our ServicePal app, which we are um, going to be sunsetting. Uh, we're retiring ServicePal and we are going to Household Pro. So stay tuned for that, but let me show you what I wrote up on the invoice. All right, here is the service invoice with the diagnosis service complaint. Um, Burnham Alpine 105, dead blower motor, client has new one, should also service. Let's take a look at the diagnosis. On previous service call, trip charge applied on to this invoice, we diagnosed a defective inducer blower motor assembly. We returned, installed client supplied blower. During replacement, performed annual maintenance. On the heat exchanger, we cleaned the internal components. We replaced several seals and gaskets. We noted failure of the stack uh, temperature sensor and cap. We replaced that. Noted original high temperature sensor. Uh, we replaced it preventatively. Replaced leaking automatic air valve. Uh, noted higher than normal system pressure. So we replaced the thermal expansion tank and installed new piping to install it in a vertical uh, installation orientation. And now we're going to cycle the system. I'm doing this just preventatively, just typing in because I know what's going to happen. Cycle system, perform combustion and draft analysis. And then we talked about the heating maintenance service plan with the client which is $22.95. Speaking of that expansion tank orientation, let me show you how we redid that. Just about done with the gas, so we're gonna 
have a live fire in a few minutes. There's the expansion tank. We kept the half inch IPS ball valve. We extended this connection with a half inch black nipple. We threw in a black half inch elbow and then we hung the expansion tank from there. Now it's in the proper orientation, vertical instead of horizontal. Why they did it that way, who knows? And also on the top, there is your Kalefi uh, eighth inch automatic air vent with the optional check valve. Yeah. Check valve's there, so if we can change this in the future, we don't gotta drain down the whole boiler. And Daniel, before you leave, you may wanna spray that, all this piping here down with some WD-40, just some rust preventer, even though it's all rusted up. All right, you ready, ladies and gentlemen? Let's see if we get the red screen of death. You know it's not gonna happen. And by the way, make sure you check out his channel, DCHVAC, that's Daniel. Show him some love, right? Show him love. And maybe one day Pete will have a channel too. Maybe. Yeah. Hi, Grandma, Nanny. Nana. 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 Cl no. Cl Claire. <laughs> she wants to wipe my mouth out with soap. <laughs> that would be an epic video. <laughs> that, would, that would be great content. She said she'd only do the video if she took it seriously and never use bad language again. Would she actually take a bar of soap? Probably hand soap. No, probably and like liquid soap, small, like, like like dishwashing. Oh, soap. get out of here! That's just who does that? That's that's that's, <laughs> that's, that's inhuman. That's inhumane. Bleach. I mean, that damn, you must have really been abused as a child. No, <laughs> I, got the channel, I, I thought I had it bad. You get beat with a with a broom and a belt all the time. <laughs> he has to though. drink bleach. <laughs> damn. Python. You Damn, you... Oh, you heard it, right? Heard it. You heard it. Gives like a sigh of relief once it's Initiates. All right. They have not had heat all season. No, oh, let's see. That's the boiler circulator kicking on for the primary loop. All right, let's see if we have any zones on. Oh, now we have both zones on now, too. Oh, actually, no, this one, no. Uh, with zone valves, you see how it's moving freely like this? I have no resistance. When I have no resistance, you can bet that the valve is calling because the motor is energized. This one, see, watch. See, it's not getting any power, so the thermostat's not calling, but that's a good little thing. You can put your money on it. Sometimes it could be, you know, wrong, but that's once in a blue moon. You got no resistance, it's on. All right. And also, if you want any Mikey Pipe stickers, like the one you see in front of this Burnham Alpine, email me, Mike, MikeyPipes.com. Okay. Running at 25%. I want to fire this bad boy up. We're going to adjust. We're going to log in. We're going to put in the password. Uh, manual control. Hi. There we go. Oh, you got the low ready? Good. Now we're in high fire. And we'll do another combustion analysis with the test though. This is the 310. You know, you could, if you want to retire that and take the 300 that we have. I like it a lot. Okay, good. <laughs> Say no more. <laughs> Say no more. Thank you so much for watching to today's video on this Burnham Alpine 105 with a few issues. We took care of all of them except the low water cutoff. Hope you found it educational and maybe even a little bit entertainment, entertaining value, right? Uh, I'd like to give a special thanks and a shout out to the people at Brute Footwear. These are the boots they sent me. They're pretty nice. They don't really weigh that much, but they are solidly built. Got that safety toe in the front. It's really, really nice. And if you would like to learn some more information about them, there's a link down in the description box down below. And if you do decide, if you want to buy and maybe purchase a pair, uh, use the coupon code uh, PIPES10 to get a discount. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me get your thoughts and feedback down in the comments section down below. How many of you already knew about those two tricks? Well, not two tricks. Two things you really need to check on a Burnham Alpine. The exhaust vent cap with sensor and the corrosion that occurs there, especially on a model that hasn't been touched, uh, and the high temperature limit sensor.
Let me get your thoughts and feedback down in the comments section down below. Make sure you check out the Mikey's Garage channel to see some exclusive uh, video on yesterday's delivery of the 992 uh, Turbo S Cabriolet. Really epic, and I owe, owe it all to you. Thank you so much for watching. Be well, God bless, stay safe.